Bad Batch Season 3 Episode 12 titled Juggernaut sees Omega return to Mount Tantis while the Bad Batch take the long way around by freeing former Admiral Rampart from his labor camp prison. And with the return of Rampart, we also get the return of his theme for the first time in over a season. This is Star Wars Music Analysis. The episode immediately sets a nervous tone as it begins with low drones in the synth. These synths have become synonymous with the CX clones and Mount Tantus. Here, we see them meet. As Omega follows Hemlock back into the lab, an intimidating ostinato plays in the cellos. Very quietly though, Hemlock's theme can be heard playing along outside of this meter. The ostinato cuts off abruptly as we see Emery again. The sudden silence was startling after all the noise that just moments earlier had occurred. Soft swells in the synths continue for the remainder of the scene. Where's Nala say? In a cell. I'm a as we transition to Pabu, the brass enter, reminding us that the Empire was not done yet with this small island planet. As Crosshair reveals a way that the Bad Batch could find Mount Tantus, his theme softly enters as he's reminded of his time as a soldier and a captive of the Empire. I didn't say I know. There's Dark music underscores the conversation as Crosshair suggests Admiral Rampart. Rampart's theme begins to emerge with his background base attacks entering. As it does, the synth used for Crosshair continues as well, connecting these two characters. He's a last resort. Why didn't you say anything before? Because Tantus isn't a place I ever wanted to go back to. However, Rampart's music never actually gets going as Batcher growling interrupts the conversation. As Fee emerges, the music lightens up to reveal she's safe. I found Fee during my scout. I saw the Imperials on my approach. Drums and brass return as we see the Imperial base that the group will travel to, along with the presumptive juggernaut that the episode is named after. Honestly, after seeing Wrecker injured last week, and then this week's episode being called Juggernaut, I was a little worried. Glad to know though that his plot armor remains intact. As they plan their mission, the beginning motif from the Bad Batch theme plays softly in the background to help give the underscoring more energy and life. Another motif enters as the group exits from Fee's ship, continuing the connection of the plan, so far, going to plan. Low beats enter next, as they always do whenever someone is attempting not to be detected in this show. It builds more as they get into position to capture the Juggernaut, adding more motion in the strings to heighten the energy and tension. Get Yet another position. soft track with beats enters the as they secure Rampart and the other prisoners. CT9904? You remembered. But the music suddenly gets really Where serious as Crosshair mentions Mount Tantus. Hemlock's theme enters as the symbol of this haunting location. A short motif from Rampart's theme enters next as he attempts to negotiate with Crosshair. Tantus base. Where is it? Ah. Tantus, you get me off this planet. You don't get what you want if I don't get what I want. As the group is discovered, the music begins to build energy. Drums and flurries in the strings accompany chords in the brass as they show down with a second juggernaut. triumphant major chord finally sounds as they ramp over the destroyed turbo tank. And look, Crosshair landed a shot. Maybe he just needs to imagine Rampart's face on everything from now on. A new track enters as they begin driving the Juggernaut along a narrow canyon path. It continues throughout the chase, continuing the energy from the chase itself and keeping us in suspense. At the last moment, Fee flies in to save the day. As she does, the Bad Batch theme enters to announce her arrival. 
but it's very brief as they aren't out of trouble yet. The Kiner's favorite ostinato of 332 returns as they board B's ship just in time. An almost silly fanfare enters as Wrecker makes the jump. Of course, it's possible that he would have fallen here, but I doubt any of us were thinking that this would be the moment to lose another of the bad match. But that flute trill that accompanies the brass just felt like too much here. I'd have been happier to just have the brass attacks in this moment, but let me know, did this feel too silly to any of you as well? The music fades as they escape, and a solo French horn takes up the Bad Batch theme. Normally with these escapes, a very heroic and loud version of the Bad Batch theme would enter, but right now, they have some serious business to attend to. No time for celebrations. As Omega's blood is confirmed, a sad version of her motif enters to accompany the moment of confirmation. The music of the children's cell and the vault from earlier episodes enters as Hemlock shows her the master plan. Or at least, that's what she thinks. The music is already telling us where she is going and why. Nothing worked. Until we combined your sin. With one of our Omega is taken into the vault to be held captive with the other Force-sensitive children, and that's where we're left with only three episodes remaining. This is your new home. And I absolutely would love to know what you all think as well. What did you think of this episode? What will end up happening to Omega, Hemlock, and Mount Tantis? What do you think the way around finding Mount Tantis that you Rampart me mentions is? Planet. Tell me in the comments below what you think and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them, along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away. And as always, may the be with you.